Hi guys! Welcome back to our channel at Abogada ng Bayan. Ikaw ba ay pinost sa Facebook or any social media at merong kasamang paninirang puri or pamamahiya? Nilagay ba ang iyong pangalan? Nilagyan ng picture? So, ikaw ay pinasikat. Ano yung pwede nating ikaso dito? Paano naman kung totoo yung kanilang... Dito tatalakayan natin kung ano yung libel and ano rin yung kaibahan nito sa cyber libel. Mas mabigat nga ba yung penalty kapag ginamitan ito ng internet? And malalaman natin dito na kapag ito yung kinomit na crime, ang kaparusahan nito ay pagkakakulong o danyos perwisyo or both. And syempre, dito tatalakayin natin kung ano yung laban ni Manny Pacquiao against doon sa libel na ikinaso kay Kiboloy. Let's go guys! Samahan nyo ako and happy anniversary sa ating mga kaabogada ng bayan. So, under the revised penal code, there are three types of defamation. Ito yung written defamation, which we call libel. Yung oral defamation naman, this is the what we call slander. And yung defamation by overt acts, Halimbawa nito is yung sinampal ka in public and napahiya ka, then we call this slander by deed. So originally, ito lang yung mga napaparusahan under the revised penal code. But eventually, with all the technologies and yung paggamit ng computer system and internet, mas mabilis ng uh, mag-spread yung information Hence, the creation of the Cybercrime Act. Or, ito yung Anti-Cybercrime Law under Republic Act 10175. Kapag yung libel is na-commit through a computer system or any other similar means, this is punishable under this Republic Act. So, according sa article number 353 ng ating revised penal code, sinasabi dito na ang libel ay nakokomit kapag ginawa ito publicly. Ibig sabihin, hindi lang yung taong sinisiraan yung nakakaalam nito. It was not made in private. It was made publicly. And yung paninira na yun was made with malicious imputation and this applies not only to a natural person pwede rin itong uh, mag-apply sa uh, corporation or any business uh, partnership or association na pwede rin siraan or nakokomit din to kapag yung discredit or dishonor tends to Blacken the memory of one who is already dead. Ibig sabihin niyan, patay na yung tao pero sinisiraan pa rin ito. And the person who is already dead can no longer defend himself. So nabanggit natin kanina na kapag libel, it is considered the written defamation. Dito, yung malicious intent is already presumed. So, kung may taong nagkaso ng libel, it will be the defendant na mag-prove na wala siyang malicious intent. Kung presumed yung malicious intent ng defendant, ano ngayon ang kanyang depensa? Ang depensa ng uh, taong nakasuhan ng libel or cyber libel would be the truth fullness of the statement. So, kailangan niyang patunayan na totoo yung kanyang sinasabi. And, it was published with good motives and justifiable ends. Ibig sabihin, wala siyang intention na uh, siraan or i-discredit or i-dishonor yung taong kanyang uh, pinose, merong defect or yung Uh, condition niya is hindi kaaya-aya. Ang kasong libel ay punishable by uh, imprisonment of 6 months and 1 day up to 4 years and 2 months and 
um, pwede rin uh, magkaroon ng danyos perwisyo o kaya naman yung pagkakakulong plus danyos perwisyo. At ito ay nafa-file doon sa uh, Regional Trial Court. Kapag naman yung uh, libel was made using a computer device or through the internet, then yung libelous statement would result to cyber libel. So, kapag uh, punishable with this uh, special law, mas mataas ng 1 degree yung penalty kaysa doon sa libel na hindi ginamitan ng social media or any uh, computer device or internet. So, kapag yan pinost sa Facebook or sa Instagram or Twitter at ito ay pinangalanan yung tao and my imputation of a crime or any dishonor or discredit dun sa taong yon, then that would fall as cyber libel. Mag-ingat po tayo when it comes to posting anything sa ating mga social media because we may not be aware meron na tayong nava-violate na batas. And as mentioned a while ago, when it comes to cyber libel, mas mataas ang penalty nito. Paano naman kung sinulatan mo yung tao ng um, anything that has libelous remarks in it. Naglagay ka rin ng mga pictures which would discredit that person or sinabihan mo siyang isa kang kabit and you have photos in it and that was sent to that person in an envelope na hindi siya uh, sealed. Um, sa isang kaso sa uh, Supreme Court, sinabi dito na yung taong nag-send with the envelope na hindi selyado, that person has already committed the crime of libel. Ang reason dito is, may mga written imputation siya inside the envelope na pwedeng mabasa or makita ng ibang tao other than that person whom the envelope was addressed. So, uh, doon po mapasok na it was made publicly. Sabi nga natin kanina, every defamatory imputation is presumed to be malicious. Ano naman yung kabaliktaran nito? Kapag yung communication was made privately, then that would not fall as libelous. So for example, kat nag-chat siya sa isang tao and it has impute, imputed na isang magnanakaw, ikaw ay isang kabit, but it was made privately, hindi ito pinost, hindi ito nakita ng ibang tao, then that would not fall as libel or cyber libel. Ang second exception natin dito is yung uh, qualified privileged communication. So, nangyayari ito sa mga radio programs, broadcast media, yung theatrical exhibition or cinematographic exhibition and others. And dito pumapasok yung fair and true reporting and was made in good faith at wala ng mga ibang comments or any libelous remarks. So, yung malicious intent dyan is not presumed. And when it comes to the press, they are given yung uh, leeway when it comes to their honest mistakes, yung imperfection, their misstatement of facts, or kung meron mang misjudgment. Kasi that's the only way that they are given the courage para maging effective yung kanilang uh, agency towards democracy. Pero yung defamation or yung pag Babalita is not an excuse to defamation. Ang sinasabi lang dito, hindi presumed yung malicious intent. So, kung yung uh, newscaster ay uh, kinasuhan ng libel or cyber libel, magsa-switch lang yung pagpurprove ng malicious intent doon sa 
taong nagkaso ng libel. So for example, may newscaster nagbalita na yung politician na to is um, magnanakaw dahil naibulsa niya at nawawala ang 10 billion pesos sa kanyang um, agency. Then, the government official na magsasampa ng kaso against the newscaster has the burden of proof na patunayan na hindi totoo na magnanakaw siya and siya rin yung may burden of proof na patunayan na may malicious intent yung newscaster. Unlike sa general rule natin, kapag kinasuhan mo yung isang tao dahil sinabihan ka na isang kabit or magnanakaw, then presumed na yung taong yon has the malicious intent na siraan ka. And that person has the burden of proof na patunayan sa korte na wala siyang malicious intent and that yung sinasabi niya is totoo. And lastly, yung fair commentaries on matters of public interest. So, dito papasok yung mga uh, criticisms against public officials with respect sa kanilang uh, official duties and functions or kung hindi naman siya government official, at least a public figure or ito yung mga artista natin or any person na involved in a public issue. So, the best example natin dito is yung current na nangyayari whereas uh, Senator Manny Pacquiao uh, ay nagkaso ng cyber libel against Pastor Kiboloy. So, ang sabi ni uh, Manny Pacquiao he has been alleged to be um, corrupting and sabi niya to brainwash the minds of the Filipino people. So, in this case, since Manny Pacquiao is a government official, yung burden of proof goes to Pacquiao para patunayan na hindi siya corrupt and uh, it was uh, with malicious intent on the part of Kiboloy para ipublic or para sabihin ito in public not the other way around na si Kiboloy yung magpapatunay na wala siyang malicious intent. And according sa isang case na din dinesidan ng court or Supreme Court, yung public opinion should be the constant source of liberty and democracy. So, must expected criticism be born for the common good. So, a public officer must not be too thin-skinned with reference to comment upon his official acts. So guys, I hope may natutunan ulit tayo about sa libel, about sa cyber libel, its uh, exceptions and yung mga uh, requisites nito. And next time that you post something on your Facebook, alam nyo na kung ano yung mga dapat iwasan. So until next time guys, maraming salamat sa pakikinig and God bless.